you ever thought about the largest volcano of all time? You may be surprised to know that it is located in Indonesia. The country is a popular tourist destination and consists of more than 13,466 islands with five major islands and approximately 30 smaller groups. Indonesia is located in maritime Southeast Asia, sharing land borders with Malaysia, Papua New Guinea, Timor-Leste, Australia, India, Palau, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. The country has a population of more than 271 million people and is by far the most populous island nation in the world. Most of the larger islands are mountainous, with peaks ranging between 3,000 and 3,800 meters. Indonesia is situated in the Ring of Fire, making it one of the most volcanically active and earthquake-prone areas on the planet. The islands of Indonesia were formed primarily by volcanic activity and ocean mountain building activity caused by tectonic plate movement in Asia, the Indian Ocean, and the Pacific Ocean, in the Indonesian region, to massive plates, the Indian Ocean and Western Pacific plates, slide beneath an even larger plate, the Eurasian plate, and the Eurasian and Australian continental plates collide. The Indonesian region is one of the most seismically active zones on the planet. It also has a leading position in terms of active and potentially active volcanoes. It has typical island arc physiography features such as a deep oceanic trench, a giant decline belt, an inner volcanic arc, and a marginal basin. The motion of this abducted plate is nearly perpendicular to the trench axis in most subduction zones. A strike-slip fault zone is visible. In some cases, such as Sumatra, the motion is oblique to the axis and runs parallel to the volcanic chain. Volcanoes in the bend to sea are the result of the Pacific plates abducting beneath the Eurasia plate. One-fourth of Indonesia's volcanoes are located north of the Sundarark in a region of complex tectonics. Several small plates have formed subduction zones that mostly run north to south. The subduction zones are responsible for the volcanoes of Sulawesi, Helmuhura, and Sandihi. Many of Indonesia's islands are rugged relics of long-dead volcanoes. There are approximately 400 volcanoes in Indonesia, a string of volcanoes that runs from Sumatra to Java and New Guinea, with a few side branches to Sulawesi and the Moluccas. The country has many mountains, and 100 of the volcanoes are active. Geological plates from Australia, Asia, and the Pacific pushed up to form Indonesia. A deep trench runs along the Indonesian chain's southern coast. The collision of the Eurasian and Australian continental plate creates a subduction zone, which causes numerous earthquakes and a chain of volcanoes. If you are interested in supervolcanoes, there is one particular place in Indonesia that you would be attracted to, Lake Toba. Many people marvel at the sight of the lake but may not be aware that beneath it lies the largest volcano of all time, which just cracked open the earth. The eruption of this volcano was so massive that it caused a volcanic winter that lasted for years. Lake Toba is located in North Sumatra, Indonesia. It is the largest volcanic lake in the world, with an area of 1,707 square kilometers. The lake was formed from the caldera of a supervolcano that erupted around 74,000 years ago. This eruption was the largest volcanic eruption on Earth in the last 2 million years. The eruption of the Lake Toba supervolcano was estimated to have a volcanic explosivity index of 8. This means that the eruption was 10,000 times more powerful than the 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens in the United States and about 100 times more powerful than the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora in Indonesia, which is considered to be the most destructive volcanic eruption in recorded history. The eruption of the Lake Toba supervolcano occurred around 74,000 years ago and is believed to have had a significant impact on the global climate and human population. The eruption of the Lake Toba supervolcano is thought to have resulted in a volcanic winter, which is a period of global cooling caused by volcanic eruptions. This volcanic winter may have lasted for several years and caused a significant decline in global temperatures, leading to crop failures and famine in many parts of the world. The eruption is also believed to have caused a significant reduction in the human population, with estimates suggesting that the number of humans alive at the time may have dropped from around 100,000 to as few as 10,000, despite the catastrophic impact of the eruption. 
The region around Lake Toba has since become a popular tourist destination, with visitors coming to see the stunning natural beauty of the lake and surrounding landscape. The lake itself is the largest volcanic lake in the world and is home to a number of unique species of fish and other aquatic life. The area around the lake is also home to several indigenous communities who have lived in the region for thousands of years and continue to maintain their traditional way of life. In recent years, there has been growing concern about the potential for another supervolcano eruption, with several sites around the world being closely monitored for signs of volcanic activity. While the chances of another supervolcano eruption are considered to be relatively low, the potential impact of such an event on the global climate and human population would be catastrophic. As such, scientists continue to study these geological phenomena in order to better understand the risks they pose and to develop strategies for mitigating their impact in the event of an eruption. Let's start with the eruption of Mount Tambor on April 10, 1815. The initial rumblings of the eruption were heard days before, but it wasn't until that evening that the volcano erupted in full force. The explosion was so powerful that it was heard more than 1,200 miles away in Sumatra. Massive boulders were tossed around like pebbles, wreaking havoc in all directions. Columns of flame erupted from the mountain, carrying a plume of gas, dust, and smoke miles into the sky. Rivers of incandescent ash poured down the slopes at speeds of more than 100 miles per hour, destroying everything in their path before hissing and boiling into the sea. Ships in the port were trapped in pumice stone rafts while tsunamis swept across the Java Sea. Volcanic ash reached as far away as Borneo. For weeks, ash and debris rained down on houses for miles around, causing widespread destruction. Fresh water sources were contaminated, crops were destroyed and sulfurous gas caused lung infections. It is estimated that 10,000 people were killed instantly. However, thousands more died of starvation and disease, bringing the death toll in Sambawa and neighboring islands to anywhere between 60,000 to 90,000. Stamford Raffles, the then governor of Java, which the British had taken over during the Napoleonic Wars, dispatched an officer to Sambawa to report on what had occurred. He discovered that there were still dead bodies lying around, that the villages were almost entirely deserted, and that the majority of the houses had collapsed. The few survivors were desperately seeking food, and an epidemic of violent diarrhea had erupted, thought to be caused by volcanic ash contaminating the drinking water. Many people died as a result. The Tambor eruption was classified as Ultraplinian, the most violent category of volcanic eruption. The name comes from Pliny the Younger's description of Vesuvius's destruction of Pompeii in at 79. Sulfurous gases are ejected into the stratosphere by such eruptions, where they combine with water vapor to form an aerosol. Clouds of sulfuric acid drops amazingly. The effect of the Tambor eruption was felt worldwide, thanks to strange phenomena reported by observers independently. For example, in the northeastern United States in the spring and summer of 1815, fog dimmed and turned red in the sunlight, which wind and rain could not dispel. It was referred to as an aerosol veil. Also, at the turn of June and July, London experienced spectacular sunsets, which are thought to have influenced paintings by Turner. As global temperatures dropped, the following year brought even more damaging effects, with serious consequences for the climate and land fertility across much of the world. Mary and Percy Shelley, Lord Byron, and two other friends were staying at the Villa di Odati in Switzerland mid-June 1816 when the weather turned rainy and foggy, trapping them inside. Byron suggested that they pass the time by each writing a horror story, which is when Mary Shelley started writing Frankenstein. Up in New York, snow fell in June, and frost was reported in Connecticut. Deep snow fell in the Quebec region of Canada. Cold weather persisted throughout the summer in North America and elsewhere, causing a large number of crops to fail. The monsoon seasons in India and China were disrupted, resulting in agricultural damage, food shortages, and widespread famine. The severe weather patterns also caused a significant rise in global food prices, exacerbating the hunger crisis. The impact of the volcanic eruption was not limited to the climate, and agriculture alone. The volcanic ash, dust, and gases released into the atmosphere also had a profound effect on air travel. 
The eruption of Mount Pinatubo resulted in the cancellation of thousands of flights worldwide, affecting millions of passengers. The ash particles, which can damage airplane engines, forced airlines to reroute their flights or cancel them altogether. In addition, the volcanic eruption also had severe environmental consequences. The ash and dust particles suspended in the atmosphere created a hazy layer, blocking sunlight and reducing the amount of solar radiation reaching the Earth's surface. This phenomenon, known as volcanic winter, can cause a temporary cooling of the planet, leading to adverse effects on plant and animal life. The Mount Pinatubo eruption was a stark reminder of the power and unpredictability of nature. While volcanic eruptions are a natural phenomenon, they can have severe consequences on human societies and the environment. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo led to the loss of thousands of lives, widespread destruction of infrastructure, and long-lasting environmental impacts. However, it also served as a valuable lesson for scientists, policymakers, and the public to better understand the complex interactions between natural systems and human societies. As a result of the disrupted monsoon seasons in India and China, agricultural damage was widespread, leading to food shortages and famine. In Africa, the drought continued to worsen, exacerbating the already dire situation caused by ongoing conflicts and political instability. Meanwhile, in Europe, the summer was unusually hot, with many countries experiencing heat waves and droughts. Wildfires broke out in several areas, including Greece and Sweden, causing widespread destruction and leading to the evacuation of many residents. These extreme weather events highlighted the urgent need for global action to address climate change and its impact on the planet. Governments, organizations, and individuals around the world began to take steps to reduce carbon emissions, increase the use of renewable energy, and protect vulnerable communities from the effects of climate change. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I think you'll really like this other video. Check it out and let me know what you think.